Christians uh, in the last days. Of course, that's also in uh, Matthew, in the book of Matthew. And um, uh, so, you know, we, we can understand that in the Jewish times, the times of the Hebrews when they were going across the desert, that they also had a lot of difficulties and God provided them some object of faith to really believe in, yeah, which was what? Yeah, the tabernacle, yeah? Uh, it's the Ark of the Tabernacle. What was inside it? Ten Commandments. Tablets of stone, yeah? Two tablets of stone. What else? Aaron's rod. Yeah, jar of manna. What was manna? It was uh, coriander seed, actually. And, uh, yeah, they made bread out of it and other things. Carrot and coriander soup, you know. Baxter's, it's pretty good. And uh, also, um, I think part of the Mosaic law, some that's in the Hebrew tradition, that, that was also there, I think, those things. Anyway, basically, there were objects for people to put their faith into. And if at least one person adhered to that, then God's promise that he would be with them. Because the ark is called the ark of the what? Covenant, covenant right? What is covenant? Promise. promise. Right? <laughs> Promise is what God promised them if they would keep to his laws and commandments. Yeah? So that covenant has been there all the time. It was actually, the promise was there even at the, at the time of creation in the three blessings that God gave humankind, yeah? With an implicit, you know, um, direction that we should follow the principle, right? Which we didn't do. But the covenant's been there and God has, as long as we could keep that covenant, then God will work with us and guide us. And, and teach us and protect us. So it's, it's not different from then, as today, as it was then. It's the same. It's the same thing. So we're very, very privileged to be able to be part of the people of the covenant, you know, of this incredible line through history. Yeah? And uh, Father explained that um, there is also something that we need to use to keep our promise with God in this time. And, you know, some of you might have been there where I talked about this, but it's, this is what Father said. Just like the Israelites who had to carry the Ark of the Covenant in their 40-year wilderness course, the Unification Church members are now entering the heavenly kingdom carrying the family pledge. And again, we must have an absolute covenant. That absolute covenant or constitutional law is the family pledge. There are no words like family pledge in history. The family pledge is a vow and a promise to achieve the heavenly kingdom. It's true. You read the family pledge. Right? And see what it says. You know? See what you're saying when you read it. Uh, it's, it's your promise, actually, to God. And uh, God also will work with you based on that promise. So, you know, Father's idea of like, uh, having um, you know, this idea of Hundoke uh, and saying the pledge and all this kind of thing, it's not a random idea. You know? Father actually instigated it after Mother fulfilled her role on the worldwide course. You know? Uh, once she'd established a basic position, 1997, uh, then Father started to instigate all these things, actually. And he had this uh, uh, day of cosmic Sabbath, uh, holy day, and he talked about we can take responsibility to bless our families, we can, but we need to do Hunoke, and he started to explain what Hunoke was. We started all those things at that time. And uh, the family pledge changed from my pledge to family pledge. became different, yeah? So... This is our promise, and we're uh, people of the promise. You know, just the same, in a sense, that you know, sincere Christians who take uh, um, uh, communi yeah, Holy Communion are just as uh, the Hebrews and Jews also uh, were or are still. So, you know, how, having made our covenant with God, having made our promise with God, so what should we do? You know. Yeah, I promise this, read this every morning, you know, blah, 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 you know, da, 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 you know, true love, you know, number four, number five, you know. Have you, have you ever said ple uh, the, the family pledge without even thinking about it? I've said it, I've said it thinking about other things, actually, even. <laughs> Didn't know I could do that, you know, it's quite amazing. But it's, you know, anyway, it's, it's really serious that we try and think about what we're actually doing, yeah? Obviously, it's not a good idea. So, you know, what do we do then, you know, if we actually haven't done very much, you know, and, or what do we do if we've messed up, you know, in our life of faith, circumstances aren't good, 
did the mistake, this mistake, that mistake. Things have worked out in a way that we never imagined they would work out, and here we are, you know, now what? You know, Foundation Day coming up, it's supposed to be all these things, and, you know, God making us a, a new start, coming to the before the fall. What, you know, what does that all mean, actually, really? What do we do? Well, you know, if we look at the essence of indemnity, as William said, it's reversal, right? It's not just sort of suffering. And it's, it's to do with conditions that Adam and Eve should have made themselves. Right? They needed to have faith in God's word. That's very important. God was giving them some direction. They needed to have faith in that. So, you know, the vertical foundation of faith, fundamentally, is having faith in God's words to us you know, in this time. And, you know, also they needed to have proper dominion over the archangel and the creation, you know, creating proper harmony between heaven and earth and all things and us and God, proper connection to these things, yeah? Uh, but they didn't, you know, the archangel took dominion and controlled things and now, you know, everyone has to work like a slave for their salary and uh, they get given a, a portion of creation every Friday afternoon or at the end of the month in their bank account you know, according to how much they've slaved away in Satan's world, basically, yeah. Shouldn't be like that at all, you know. So, you know, what do we do? Actually, we need to gain proper dominion over ourselves first and also the spirit world. And also, we need to have faith in God's words and in this time that we're in, you know. It's so easy, I, I know, to throw away a lot of things at the moment. If you just go on any, you know, negative blog site or um, get, you know, whatever it is, mailing list down Google of people complaining about everything that's going on at the moment in our movement. It's so easy to lose track of what is really going on, you know. Uh, so we have to be very careful, actually, because it's, you know, this is just temporary time, you know. Things will change. If you look back at the time of Jesus and the disciples, anyway, you know, it's a long time ago, you know. Things have moved on. Things have changed. Things you know, developed from those times. And it's the same with us, you know. Well, in one million years' time, you know, one million years will happen, right? There will be a time, you know, on, you know, New Year's Eve, a million AD, right? It will happen. And people, I don't know if they'll even know about this time, right? But the world would be very different, depending on the kind of things that we do, actually, and the values we put into practice and, and the standards. And we know very well what is true, you know, we understand. We've been living the principle a long time, uh, you know, at least all our lives, some young people. And, uh, you know, we understand what's right and wrong, and we can see the value that uh, Father has. Actually, I would say that if, if there's one book that you should read, if you don't read anything else for Hernoke, that is World Scripture, um, second edition. It's an, it's an amazing, amazing book, I tell you. Incredible book, actually. Uh, not the least because Andrew Wilson has compacted everything in a certain way and explained it, but actually uh, every chapter brings out very deep points that Father said about everything, actually. And it's so great, you know. It's less boring than Chan Sun Gang, actually. You know. um, but Because it, it's very well organized, actually, and I, I do recommend it. You can even leave out the other religious people's bits if you, if you need to, because it's difficult to read them and know what they're, what they're referring to. But if you just read Father's words, they're really, really amazing, so I do recommend that. Uh, so, you know, we need to have this faith in God's word and in, in what's going on at the moment. Um, and, you know, there are basically very, it's not very complicated, actually. That, you know, Father explained um, on, um, uh, on the, the, in June 2006, when Father established um, the Heavenly Palace, he kind of set out some ethics. He said there are three rules, you know. Basically, we need to keep family ethics, educate young people in a moral vision that includes purity and preparation for marriage. You know, that's not complicated, but the world just can't do that at the moment. But we can do it, you know, we can do it, and we can help people to understand. And also commit to fidelity between husband and wife, you know. And, uh, and secondly, human rights, establish social traditions of respect of others' rights. It's also not complicated, but society doesn't seem to be able to manage it. And stewardship, exercise moral stewardship of the natural world and public resources. You know, really take, king, th take care of things around you. Take care of yourself, you know. Make yourself look good, 
Yeah? Make your surroundings feel good. Create a beautiful area around you. And that were, that's a reflection of your spirit, basically. Yeah? And we can do that, then actually the natural world starts to get drawn into us if, these, if we carry out these three uh, points. But of course, within ourselves, there's a tremendous struggle going on, isn't there? You know, such a struggle sometimes, you know, so much, you know. And I wish I could tell you some things I go through, but it's like super embarrassing, so I better not, you know. But uh, I, I, we all go through really private, difficult things, don't we? Yeah? I'm sure you do. You, you, you'll be so embarrassed if someone found out about how you really are, or what you're really going through, or what you did last week, you know? Yeah? You wouldn't be, you'd be embarrassed, wouldn't you? Yeah? I think a lot of, a lot of us would be because we're struggling with things inside us. But you know, fundamentally, Satan is trying to use us, and especially at this time, he's trying to pull us away, you know, distract us with this and that and the other, and you know, all our feelings, you know, what, what's it all about anyway, and why should I, and I'm fed up with all this, whatever it is you're going through. Yeah? So we're, we're like this kind of struggle, and I won't go through details, but you know, I'm sure you've seen this diagram in one way or another somewhere in, in your, your workshop life, you know? Uh, you know, we're basically, we're torn between two ways of life, right? And the, the thing we have to do is we have to control ourselves. You know what's right. You know, if, you, if, you, if you're in a very nice atmosphere, you're in a Sunday service, uh, you know, you've been praying, you're good, you're, you know what's right, you know what's right and wrong, but sometimes you just don't do what's right. You do the wrong thing. And you get pulled away because of your ancestry, because of your circumstances or whatever it is. But you have to make a very big effort, actually, to overcome those things. And it, it really is like life and death kind of effort. Sometimes I felt, you know, God, I can't overcome this, you know. I feel like that sometimes. I, I want to overcome, but I can't, you know. I just give in, or I do the wrong thing or something, you know. So we have to really make a big effort. It's such an effort to do it, actually, but we have to do it. And the more you can control yourself, the better, right? So Father explains very simply, you know, um, fasting, right? Don't get caught up with food. Some people love food. Recently, I tried to, I tried to lose weight. I, was, I should be 69 kilos, and I became 76 kilos. And I, 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 it was a certain point where I thought, you know, <laughs> a certain point where I thought, you know, I can't, I can't bend over without feeling uncomfortable. <laughs> my stomach went over my belt, you know. I thought, oh, I don't like that. I've got to lose weight. So I started to try and lose weight. It's really difficult, actually. So difficult. I feel so spaced out and hungry half the time. And, you know, and when everyone else was piling potatoes on their plate, I was thinking, oh, I want these potatoes. You know, it's so difficult to overcome that. You know. But anyway, I got down to 69 kilos. Great. I put it on again after Christmas. So, but anyway, yeah, <laughs> just a little bit. Yeah. I'm 72 now. Anyway, fasting, right? So fasting, some, for some people, is a big thing, right? It's, I mean, we all, we all laugh and everything, but it's actually not easy to do, right? It's not easy. You know, you feel really miserable when you're fasting. Uh, so we need to deny our physical body that way. Also, sexual abstinence, you know? You know, maybe some of you are older, blessed couples, you know, maybe you can't have relationships as well, or you're, one of the other spouse doesn't want to or something, and you have to struggle with that so much, you know? How to overcome that? How to deal with that, you know? Or maybe even when you're young, you need to think about well, how to control yourself, you know, so that you can, you know, have a right attitude and so on, right? So anyway, I won't go into too much detail there. But uh, anyway, also sacrificing for others. Absolute sex. Yes, absolute sex. <laughs> watch, watch Xiang Jinim and Yananim's uh, yes. sermon. <laughs> it's so cute because uh, Yananim is so, uh, so innocent about the whole thing. It's really great, actually. She's not embarrassed at all. It's amazing. I'd be a red as a beetroot, I think, you know, if it was her. And also, we need to sacrifice for others. We need to make offerings, right? So what's the Sunday service for? It's for offering. It's for offering. We offer ourselves, our time, our tithe to our community. We come and meet our brothers and sisters, take care of our elders, look after the older ones who are a bit doddery, you know, keep them happy, and you know, help our younger ones, stop them rushing around and try and make friends with them. Yeah? And also, of course, we need to love our enemy. Yeah? The opposite of that is all the other things. We get self-indulgent, self-centered, we're greedy, we're lustful, uh, slothful, lie around all over the place, sacrifice others for myself, yeah? So it's our responsibility. It's our responsibility to overcome this. It's our battle. Nobody's going to do it for us. No one. They'll just see the result. Oh, you know, they just criticize you. Oh, he's this and he's that or she's that, you know. And, you know but it's, it's, it's our battle. No one's going to do it for you, right? 
our responsibility. We need to strengthen the mind, our heart and conscience, to separate from Satan's influence and regain control over our body because that's what the problem was of the fall. Satan could control everything, basically the physical world. Yeah? So we need to overcome that. And, you know, that brings us to the point, you know, if we really work on that very hard for, you know, Father says three months, you know, and 30, 30 years actually for me, to be honest. Um, anyway, you know, it depends where your ancestors come from, I guess. Uh, so it brings us to the point at which we can cross the line to the status of Adam and Eve before the fall. If you can purify yourselves enough, if you can be in control of yourselves enough, right, you don't undo what you you keep doing. I know some people, they, they try and they do this and that you know, service and offering, brother, and then they go off and go to the pub and get blind drunk and, you know, you know why, what's the point of that? You know, you're just undoing everything, actually, basically. You know? And I don't know if you know yourselves, but if you do something that's really unprincipled, you don't do the right thing, you lose control, actually, for about three days, you feel terrible. Have you experienced that? I've experienced it, definitely, you know. I feel absolutely, I can't pray, I can't think, I can't even work, I can't concentrate, I feel really guilty, I feel bad, you know, and it takes three days to sort of climb up and feel a bit better about it, you know, and they think, oh, I don't want ever to do that again, you know, and then later on you do it again, you know? yeah, it's like that, and then but bit by bit, by bit, by bit, over 30 years, you know, you get there, right, so it brings us to the point which we can get to the status of Adam and Eve before the fall, which is the whole point of Foundation Day, right, Father restored this. He restored, first of all, you know, Jesus, is, Jesus got married. Father could get married with mother. Then they spent this 40-year course, 43 years, to restore the foundation of Christianity. Raise up mother as a bride. Inherit the foundation of the movement as a bride. Then she could stand as true parent, true mother with father, right? Then another blessing, right? Which was actually, uh, you know, Adam and Eve, their relationship, actually establishing that. And now again, Father with mother from the spirit world. It's like even the archangel, if you like, somehow, to restore that. Really restore the fall. Try and get back to before the fall. Also, you know, it's no coincidence that since 2000, we've all been going on loads of workshops in Champion, right? All kinds of Champion workshops and numerous uh, blessings, right? Because, you know, we can't cross the line by ourselves. We need God's grace given by, you know, the Messiah, given through the Messiah. We need to have someone to pay the price for us and to guide us and teach us. And if we can connect in heart with them, like, like I did with my dad, you know, or later I could connect with father because I could catch something of father as an old man trying his uttermost best. You know? If we can catch that about father, you know, we can actually gain the grace of being with father you know, in, in a, like a newer realm, a higher realm. Because the spirit world is anyway, is all to do with your spiritual state, isn't it? We know that. We grow up to this point when we're on earth, that's where we're going to be in the spirit world, right? We're not going to be up there or down there. We're going to be there, right? So if we can connect to Father, you know, Father said, you know, just hold on to me. And I, I, you know, it's like holding on to a rope and I'll pull you up. Yeah, I said that in this speech we just read. It's just a bit like that, actually. Connect to Father in some way in heart. And then actually we can gain so much benefit from Father and uh, true parents. So through this blessing, and here are all the blessings we had. I kind of carefully researched it, actually. And we've gone through seven different things. Yeah? First of all, there was my own blessing, for example. Um, you know, when I got blessed, or when you got blessed, if you got blessed. Then there's, there was a registration into the new nation of Chonal Guk in July 2000. Some of you went to Korea for that. And uh, everyone had to confess, repent, and make renewal. Right, National level blessing, it was called. We took holy wine at that time. Again, 2002, January... We were all asked to take holy wine for the third time, yeah, because of blessing and then 2000 and this time. And then actually February the 6th, 2003, when father and mother had their second blessing, then also that was the world blessing. Father made a blessing prayer. I don't know if you remember that. I remember it very clearly because I was there. And then he kind of went like this, you know, something at the end of the prayer. Kind of, that was his, like, okay, that's, you're part of this blessing kind of thing. Then August 20th, 2004, we drank holy wine, um, and then again, June the 13th, 2006, we uh, drank holy wine again and uh, had a, uh, a renewal of uh, candles and salt. October the 14th, you probably remember that one when Damonim, I think she came here, or Hunmanim came here, and uh, we needed to make extra conditions, and it was like a real renewal, chance for people to repent and start again. 
and we attended a two-day workshop on original divine principle, and there was a special donation. That was a cosmic level blessing. And then once again, there's another blessing. And, you know, I've heard it's like God's blessing or God's level blessing or something, you know, you know, high level or broader. In a sense, you know, we can say that this is, you know, we're talking about God coming into humankind. Of course, we're not at that level. I'm not at that level yet. I'm trying to work towards that level, right? But we know, at least we can say maybe true parents are. And, and that's the first point that God can really start to come into uh, humankind. So we've had a lot of chances to start again, Right? To go to Chongpyong, you can't say that we never had a chance, right? And Father gave us that chance lots of times to repent and start again, and he paid a price each time for us. He didn't just hand out holy wine and holy salt, okay, you know, off you go. He had to pay a price for those things and give us another chance to really think about who we're doing. So this is our, you know, last chance, right? So Adam and Eve were God's children, you know, Adam and Eve's marriage would have been God's marriage and the appearance of the substantial God. We can understand that, right? If they're really pure and everything and God was in them, anyway, God's somehow there, yeah? And Adam and Eve's first love would have been God's first love. Until now, God couldn't love substantially in a body. Human history has been the long journey of God's seed and lineage, literally, you know? God trying to put this kind of point into humankind, into the, into the universe, where he could be, you know, where he could love, where he could grow and have his children and experience everything like we experience. Yeah? And with the appearance of true parents, you know, God is finally liberated to love, basically through that. So foundation day then is, is like the foundation of three liberations. You know, Satan's blood lineage is eradicated through the blood lineage, through the, the blessing. We can make a new start. And Satan's dominion over this world and through our fallen nature is overcome by us living a principled life. Right? We have to live a principled life. And Satan's lifestyle, you know, the environment that we're sort of subjected to, will be changed into the environment of Chanel Guk, you know, heavenly kingdom. Of course, those things don't happen straight away. So don't think, oh my God, you know, uh, I'm not blessed yet, or you know, oh, I don't live a principled life yet, and you know, uh, what's going to happen? I'm going to go to hell, you know. No, don't think like that, because, you know, how many, how many members are there in the world? I've no idea, but it's not very many compared to the whole population, right? It's a process, and in the Bible it talks about a thousand-year period, you know, until uh, a mille the millennium afterwards when Satan will be unleashed on this world again and he'll find no place to rest, kind of idea, yeah? So it'll, it's a process, it's, you know, but God needs to start somewhere, and, you know, he's, he's starting with true parents. Father gave everything to get to this point. Everything he had to get to this point. And he's hoping that his children, us, that we can follow in the same footsteps as much as we can possibly do, right? So that in our own families, we can create a really great culture, right? So, you know, we can educate our children uh, and culture of heart, yeah? How to take care of each other, how to respect parents, how to respect elders and youngers, how to look after the environment, right? How to pass on that tradition to their children, you know, how to do that. So, you know, we need to create this environment and then gradually, bit by bit by bit by bit by bit, it'll expand. Just like, you know, the Hebrews, they expanded and expanded and even the Christian culture expanded and expanded. So we'll be the same. It just takes time. But you need to start at the right point. If we don't start right, it'll be a mess, okay? And the less people that start right, the more of a mess it'll be. So we better, you know, start right and do our very best to live the right way. And through our own children's children's children, we'll see something really fantastic, you know, in the end. So the foundation day is then like the third holy wedding of true parents. It's like God's own wedding to true mother. If you think about God as like father, you can think like, you know, that's God's wedding to mother. The completion of true parents, heaven, earth, and humankind, like the God of day and God of night, if you've been studying that. Uh, the completion of the heavenly family, you know, really establishing some, some point. It you know? doesn't mean everyone's perfect and everything's fine. It doesn't mean that. No. It means just the seed is there, ready to really sprout very well, like it would have done if Adam and Eve had done the right thing. Completion of the heavenly nation. It right? doesn't mean a nation instantly pops up. You know, I wouldn't be surprised that actually if North Korea collapsed in a heap, it's pretty ripe to do that honestly, and it'll be a real disaster if it does, because it'll be so difficult to sort out, I can imagine, 
thinking about what East and West Germany was like. Anyway, completion of the heavenly nation, at least some basis. You know, Father started with holy salt, like, you know, holy salt, and then holy grounds, and finally, like, champion, and then a few champions around. There's one in Commando now, isn't there? He wanted actually 12 around the world. And, you know, spreading and spreading and developing uh, this kind of heavenly nation. Completion of coronation of God's kingship, where, you know, God has absolute authority over heaven, earth, and humankind. Right, so this is the point, actually, where that starts to happen. So, you know, that's like kind of judgment day, then. God starts to really work quite strongly. And it'll be the unification of the spiritual and physical worlds as well. I mean, I don't know, have you ever felt, have you felt recently? It's kind of, yes. yeah, I feel it, actually. Something's more and more close, and something's more going on, actually. And, uh, you know, the spirit was kind of peering over my shoulder all the time, you know, saying, what, what did you say? You know, what did you do, why did you do that? And it's like the beginning, really, of the substantial channel gook. It's the time when we can really establish some basis, yeah? So, you know, if we say completion of heavenly family, it means we become the direct children of God, you know, because true mothers become one with God as God's wife, and because God himself has been completed. It's a bit like that, finally, in some point, yeah? You can sort of look at this. I'm just taking a couple of points here. And as blessed couples, we be registered as the citizens of the substantial channel gook, like some real beginning point, I think, you know, we'll receive the heavenly seal, he says in one of these lectures that we got over the last few years. Uh, so if you check that out in the Bible, right, it's got, it's got about heavenly, I typed in seal, and here we go, Revelation 7 talks about it. Okay, I don't know who these four angels are, Joanna, no idea, but anyway, I, force, I saw four angels standing at the four corners of the earth, holding back the four winds of the earth to prevent any wind from blowing on the land or on the sea or any tree. Then I saw another angel coming up from the east, from the east, having the seal of the living God. He called out in a loud voice to the four angels who had been given power to harm the land and the sea. Do not harm the land or the sea or the, tree or the trees until we put a seal on the foreheads of the servants of our God. Then I heard the number of those who were sealed, 144,000 from all the tribes of Israel. So who's that? Yeah, it's us, right? It's us, isn't it? Yeah, we're the kind of 144,000, yeah. So, you know, please uh, take this time seriously. I think it's a great chance just to kind of review our life of faith, really, you know, and uh, really try and, it's not just about making a new start, but it's about determining to really put a principle into practice in our lives so that we can gain some incredible merit and, and just kind of grace from God. You know, if I, if I act principally and, and really try and control myself strongly and do the right things, then I feel God's grace you know, quite deeply, actually. And uh, it, should, it should be like that all the time. You know, unfortunately, I can't do it all the time. It kind of flows backwards and forwards and struggle with it. But let's, let's make an effort. And I think this Foundation Day can be really uh, real. An incredible foundation for us all. Yeah, thank you.